Okay, this is the near the start. I should probably make an introductory video on it, but I'm going to start start doing uh, classical mechanics. Uh, this is your upper level or medium level undergraduate course on how th forces and motion and energy and force of constraint and Lagrangian, all that cool stuff. So we are going to use vectors. I assume that you've seen a vector before, so this is just a short review. So first, how do you represent a vector? Um, there's a couple ways. So let's say I have a vector A. Here's my vector A. You know, you can draw it, okay, which is not really actually that useful. Uh, so then I could say, this is the way I like to do it, A. So you can break these into components. If this is the X, Y, and then the Z direction coming out, uh, these are Cartesian vectors I'm going to start off with. Then A can be broken into three components, AX, AY, and AZ. So I could write that as AX, AY, AZ. I like that way. So this is a shorthand notation that just pairs the three components, the scalar values of the three components, and writes it that way. Okay, you could also write it this way. This is a very common way, and I'm cool with this. AX x hat plus a y y hat plus a z z hat. So this is really nice because it uses these unit vectors x y and z, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, and, but again, it has the same information. These a x a y and a z are the same. Uh, and then there's another way that's exactly the same, but you know, uh, a x i hat plus a y j hat plus a y k hat. I don't, I don't, I'm not 100% sure why you use i, j, and k. Uh, and in fact, you can actually also represent a vector uh, as, uh, you can use these unit vectors instead of i hat, j hat, k hat. Some people use e1 hat, e2 hat, e3 hat. Um, and so these are more generic direction vectors and they don't have to do with Cartesian coordinates and that's what's nice about those. Okay, let's get started uh, with the important stuff. Hopefully you've seen this. If I have another vector B, A, well, no, not A, B, X, B, Y, B, Z, then I can say A plus B equals A, X plus B, X, A, Y plus B, Y, A, Z, plus bz. So that's that's one of the nice things. You can do vector addition, and which is subtraction too, uh, by just adding and subtracting the components. And in this case, it's important to note that a plus b is equal to b plus a. Yay. Okay. Write my vector a, ax, ay, az. Now we have scalar multiplication. So let's say I multiply this by some scalar C, C times A. I just multiply the different components by that constant C. So I get C A X, C A Y, C A Z. And this is equal to A C. Again, the order doesn't matter. Okay, let's see. I wanna make sure I get on my notes. Um, magnitude. So the magnitude of the, of the vector, if this was a three-dimensional distance vector, the magnitude would represent the actual length of the vector independent of the direction. So the magnitude of a vector we define as this, and it's simply ax squared plus ay squared plus az squared. And I know that I sometimes write my y's like an x, and that's my fault. That's on me. That's not on you. That's on me. I'm sorry. I'll try to do better. Okay, that's the magnitude. Uh, it's a scalar value. Uh, now we have the unit vector, a hat. This is defined as the vector a divided by the magnitude of the vector a. Now, and, and so we have the vector a, we have the magnitude, um, and it has a magnitude. The magnitude of a hat is equal to 1. And that's really nice. So you may think, oh, what the heck, who really cares? Here's one example. Here's a planet, and here's an object, and then I have this vector r, like that. And I want to find the gravitational force on this. It would be this way, f equals negative g, this is 1, this is 2, m1, 
m2 over the magnitude of r squared. Now I'm stuck because that's a vector. Scalar, 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 I don't have a vector. So you can't make a vector equal, equal to a scalar. If I put in here r hat, now that is a vector. So this says find all this stuff which is a magnitude. r hat is a vector pointing that way and the negative sign actually gives the force this way. So I get a vector equation and you may think who really cares, but it matters a lot when you're dealing with multiple situations where you need to actually know the direction. If it's just these two, I calculate the magnitude and deal with it in whatever way I want. But now suppose that has some momentum vector that way, the direction of that force really does matter. Okay, so the unit vector is important for a lot of different reasons. Um, and let me go ahead and say x hat, y hat, z hat are unit vectors in the x, y, and z direction. And in fact, x hat is the vector 1, 0, 0. y hat is the vector 0, 1, 1, 0. z hat is the vector, I forgot what z hat is. I'm just kidding. You know what it is. 0, 0, 1. And there's no units. So if I, if I actually have this vector, let's write this out. Let's say a is equal to 1, 2, 3 meters. It's a, it's a position. I don't know what it is. It doesn't really matter. And I write this as a equals 1 x hat plus 2 y hat plus 3 z hat. I still need those units, meters. And now I write this as a equals 1 times x hat. It's going to be 1, 0, 0 times the meters plus 2 times y hat is going to give me 0, 2, 0 meters. 3 times z hat is going to be 0, 0, 3 meters. And if I add that all together, I get 1, 2, 3 meters. I don't know. You, you, it seems obvious, but I think we take those kind of things for granted and just kind of gloss over them a lot of times. Okay, I'm moving right along. Sorry, so minutes long. Okay, uh, the dot product. This is a vector operation. If I have two vectors, a equals ax, b, y. See, I did it. I'm learning. Now, what the heck am I doing? I was focusing on the y. a equals ax, a, y, a, z. b equals bx, b, y, b, z. Then I can define a dot b. But you can't multiply two vectors, right? Multiplication is a scalar operation. Yes, there is an operation between a scalar and a vector, but operating two vectors together, we, there's, what do you do? So there's actually two ways to do it. There's more than two ways, but you can define any way you want. The dot product is defined as uh, the, uh, we're also known as a scalar product. It's defined as this, ax times bx plus ay times by plus az times bz. So you get, you take these two products, you op vectors, you operate them together and you get a scalar answer. Okay. There's another method for this that's useful. It's the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. And this is really cool because if you have two vectors in component form, you can actually use the dot product to find the angle between them. I take the two magnitudes and I do the dot product this way and I solve for cosine theta. Okay, but we'll do that later. The, this is dot product. Then there's the cross product. And it's defined as, this one's a little bit weirder, okay. This one, uh, A cross B, is defined as the determinant of the matrix x hat, y hat, z hat, ax, ay, az, bx, by, bz. And so let's do this determinant. So I get, uh, I take this and I expand about that, right? And I get the determinant of this two by two. So it's gonna be uh, x hat times a y b z minus a z b y plus, now I'm gonna do the y hat one. Now, since this has a, this has a, uh, a this one, remember you have to multiply by a negative sign, like the Jacobian is what it's called, I forget, but 
Uh, so you multiply this one by negative one. So I'm actually gonna do it opposite. Instead, I'm gonna go this times this minus this times this. So it's gonna be AZBX minus AXBZ, and then plus Z hat times, again, we're gonna do this, this, AXBY, It is minus, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I blanked out there for a second. A, Y, B, X. Okay, so there's your cross product formula. The key thing is you get another vector, right? Because this is a scalar value times a unit vector gives a vector. So this is a this whole thing added together is a vector. Uh, and the other important thing is that this, if we call this the vector C, the vector C is perpendicular to both A and B. So this is inherently a three-dimensional problem. You can't make it in two dimensions. Now, of course, there is another definition. AX cross B magnitude is going to be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. Okay, and that's the cross product. Okay, one more thing. Derivatives. Okay, so let's take a position vector, because we, if we want to take a derivative, I'd like to take a derivative with respect to time, because this is mechanics, right? So here I have some uh, object position uh, defined by the vector r, where r equals rx, ry, something's going to fall, rz. Now what if I want to take the derivative with respect to time? the derivative of the vector r with respect to time is going to be, you actually take the derivative of the components. So this is going to be drx dt, dry dt, drz dt. And so this is going to give me actually the velocity, and this is vx, vy, vz. So you can take the derivative of the vectors, you have to take the derivative of the individual components. Okay, there are some other important vector things, but this is a good start, a good review. We're going to do um, Cartesian coordinates, we're going to look at motion in Cartesian with Cartesian coordinates, and then we're going to go to uh, cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates, it's going to be great. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later.